This episode is brought to you by Wallstorm Marine, Sage Fly Rods, Fish Pond USA, and Scientific Anglers. Uh, this is Alex Lapkus. I'm here with Russ Madden, uh, dear friend. We are fishing um, in northern Michigan, pre-spawn smallmouth fishing. Uh, we're starting to creep into the low 50 degree water temps, which I always kind of look for as my goal to start doing the fly thing. Um, they're definitely very catchable fish prior to, but a little more oriented to the bottom. So once you get in the 50s, you start getting a little bit more opportunity on the fly. So we're up here doing that today. Um, basically our setup is big bait fish patterns and we're fishing a lot of six to 10 foot of water, four to 10 foot of water. Um, so we're using a mix of lines probably the the one we're using the most is a is an SA line that is actually in prototype stage but they're I believe they're releasing it this year and it is a 24 foot type 3 um, which seems to work good for the mid column fishing uh, you can be a little slower with it without having to chase the line the whole time uh, typical eight nine weight rods depending on wind size of fly but you need something big they're bigger fish and we're throwing big baits with some wind today so that's kind of critical and we'll see what we can do without getting blown in there too far but like you see it kind of comes up down up down all through here right how deep we flailing this it's going to be like six eight we're in 12 now yeah and i'm going to drift us in up on these flats a little more it might take a minute it might take a little sun but i don't know they usually bite this big dark stuff in this i should have had some sort of clouser thingy on but i got a clouser thingy on but i don't know how i've never fished over here so well it's all pretty clean dude it's a lot of sand i could go with the clouser thingy just to make it totally different presentation well that's kind of what i was thinking i also got that I've caught the crap out of them on just hair jigs, but at least we got two different presentations going now. Yeah. See what happens. That one little pike came in lazy just looking at it. So it might take a little sun, which I think we're supposed to get this afternoon. Yeah, we are. To get them really fired up. That's what it kind of took the other day, but eh, what the hell, we're here. Oh, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. That's on that bigger bait fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a bass. Hang on, let me get that. Oh, yeah, that's a nice. Oh, boy, he's feisty. There you go. Number one. Ooh, that's not small. That's a fat one. Grim. Oh, yeah. Red eye. Oh, boy. Nice pre spawn creature. Whistler. On the Whistler. One of ye old favorites. <laughs> yeah, it is. Eh, just aren't shallow yet. Because when they are, you see them. And I have not been spooking anything. Seems like they should be here, though. Oh, they'll. I think once that sun comes out, all of a sudden it'll be like, oh, there they are. Nice there we go. Eh, yeah, little fella. Whatever. Little nah. one. Little one. I got her. I got it. I got it. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Just a little fella. Put right up in that little slot. Just a little one. Oh, yeah. I got that hook right in his bottom jaw like he wanted to eat it. Little fella. Oh, well. No, can't all be giant hogs. You'd think if you were running a nine inch lure, you might catch less smaller fish, but you know, it doesn't really work that way, does it? You'd like to think there'd be a size that only the big ones would bite. There isn't. Well, that's okay, they're all fun, whatever. Not like I went through a $7 sucker minnow to catch it. 
that gets a little discouraging. <laughs> oh, cool, a 30 inch muskie on a $7 sucker. Awesome. There he is. There he is. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a good one. Alex, that's huge. Oh, there we go. That's what we were looking for. That's pre-spawn. That's what we're looking for. It's a big one. Crush that thing. I don't know how big it is. Big pre-spawn female though. Nice fish. We got some big ones around here. Um, dark, speckled up, bent up in the shallow water warm and just getting ready for the spawn. So that's what we do it for. Get some bigger fish than a lot of places. Shallow water, big baits, early spring. Nice one. That's a nice one. Okay, so basically what you want to be conscious of out here is when you're casting out in the lake is less fall cast, the better. The wind is a really your enemy when you're doing this. So you want to get it out there kind of as quick as you can, um, but under control, of course. The One of the biggest things where people are going to struggle on hooking fish is if their land line is not landing straight when it goes out. If you have curves and twists and everything in there, then, you know, you're going to be dealing with slack the entire presentation. So you want to land it straight and then you can just go right into your tree. See, we're only fishing four or five foot of water right now. So you're not really needing to count it down at all. Um, and you want to keep it tight. We're kind of getting blown towards it. So I'm kind of going at a little more accelerated pace than maybe I want. But that's just because of broke control and trying to keep the line tight enough. You know, the kind of one of the keys is these fish are eating a lot on the paws. So it's like you're going back to grab the line and you're getting tight there. I just had a follow on that. But a real basic, nothing fancy on the retrieve. You know, you're just kind of pull paws. Um, it's kind of cold water still. We're low 50s. So it's not like the speed is the, the trigger right now. There he is. That looks a little better, doesn't it? I'm about the spotlight. Well, I mean, the thing was all the way out there. <laughs> yeah, it's a little better, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's puking up draw, daddy -o. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Yay! It's not the show side. <laughs> Jack wagon? Yep. What do we got? Oh yeah, little feller, you can handle that. Okay, they're a nice batch here. Nice, Russell. When they're calling those peanuts, they're having a good Was day. that on the peanut? No. Nope, fired. When Bait you're pit. calling them small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good day. I think it was this. They started to move on these flats a little bit, I think. That's, I think it's that's A couple degrees is, a, is big out here. Oh, there was one following. He's fleeing now. Of course, he's now fleeing. Yeah, no, they were up. I think it was like this cut here we caught shit it looks really good that little spot that out one there. little spot because yeah. it's all fucking 
you know, flat, shallow flat, warming flat, shit right. all around it and then yeah. one pit. And I think that that's like, it's all that heat that surrounds it. And they get in that one shallowest spot that's getting, there oh, there is. you go, there you go. Oh, that's a little better one, yeah. isn't it? Been about the same as, as some of them, but they're. Oh, he's angry though, isn't pulling. he? All right. He'll bend that glass pole, won't he? There. Oh. Yeah, I have a little too much fun with them. Oh, man. You can do this the rest of the day. Yeah, it was perfect. Shh, don't yeah. say nothing. <laughs> well, it won't last. Don't worry. It does make a difference with the fly pole. Ugh. Oh, here you are, you dirty demon. Oh, come on, eat it. You still there? Oh, you dirty demon. You still there? Still there? Still there? Still trying. Doesn't care. There he is. Oh goodness gracious. <laughs> There's a lot of tease in there, young man. There's a lot of jiggling in front <laughs> yeah, of him, wasn't was. it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Staying on him makes it. Ever. Oh boy. If it was one, you know, trying to get a nice fish to reverse, and that's just sticking with it right there. <laughs> Again, you know, you reiterate when you're moving toward that boat, just really be conscious of the boat's angle and the direction that it's going toward that fly line because you're moving at it. So when these fish are coming, everything's moving in this presentation. The fly, the boat, and keeping tight to that fly is pretty integral. So you're really just playing the boat handling in terms of your presentation. Try to not let it swing too far out. It's kind of like in a river where that fly starts swinging out, kind of sucks. So you want to keep that fly straight out ahead and keep up with that boat if you can, so you can set your hook on these fish. And I'm just doing a modest retrieve. I got a little bit heavier line on now. I got the type six on here. So it is sinking quite a bit and I got a little heavier fly. I'm just trying to sometimes battle in that wind. You can, especially in the back, you can, increase your odds by just changing up that presentation a little bit, but it's another line that I use along with that type three, especially when it gets windy. And was there a big one down there randomly? Dude, there's, this is pretty cool in here, isn't it? Yeah, that was a random giant bass swimming. Just meandering. Back from, yeah. Oh, wrong box. That's the Mooski box. <sighs> Probably don't need any of that on my nine pole. Probably don't need any of that on the nine pole. There he is. Oh, small fry. It ain't much, but it's a nice one. I'll take it. Just need a bigger lure. I know, there was two of them chasing that. <laughs> oh yeah. That should be big enough. Oh yeah, let's try this stupid looking thing. This great. Oops. Sorry, buddy. It's a big shadow. I Bro. saw some I saw a very large creature coming on the back side of this flat here. Got me thinking. Oof. Oh, almost to the bass waypoint, Russell. You hold on. I mean, I have a bass on the TV. <laughs> and that waypoint is a bass. Open your eyes, dude. Fish. Come on. Keep fighting. There we go. Nice. Yeah, really nice fish here. I think we'll probably end it with that. It was a pretty good lull there. We put in some time to get this one, so good way to end it up.